Hello guys, Joster here. Welcome back to another video. So finally, I put together my review of the LG C4 OLED. I have the 42 inch version, which I pay $1,500 plus tax, but it is also available in 48 inch, 55, 65, and even 77 inches. I also have the C1 OLED 48 inch, and I put them side by side to see if it's worth upgrading to the newest model. If you're interested in seeing the unboxing and initial setup, check out my previous videos. I also have the best settings for gaming. Okay, so I've been using this TV mostly for gaming. And that is the main reason I purchased the 42 inch version. I normally use a 32 inch 4K monitor for gaming. So adding 10 more inches, it is a big jump. I do sit around three feet away from the TV to get adjusted to the picture, but it's totally worth it. Another thing I like about the C4 is that all HDMI ports are 2.1. They also port 4K 120 Hz, VRR or FreeSync, Auto Low Latency Mode, HDR, Dolby Vision for gaming, and even 144 Hz of refresh rate for PC. So if you want all the green check marks on your Xbox Series X and all the features working on the PS5, then this TV is a great option. I also recommend to use high quality HDMI cable with ultra high speed data transfer. I personally recommend Rui Pro cables. They are certified for ultra high speed and their fiber optic cables are designed for long distance. I'm still using the original cable I got like three years ago on a daily basis and it still works like new. I will leave a link in the description of the video if you would like to purchase one. Okay, so my first recommendation when setting up this TV is to make sure you enhance the HDMI port so you can use all the gaming features. You do this by going to the settings, then go to general, then external devices, then HDMI settings, and switch to 4K under HDMI deep color. And now you will have all the gaming features available. The game bar is another great feature I like about LG TVs. This allows you to quickly access gaming information like frame rate, VRR or FreeSync, black stabilizer, and latency. And you can also make adjustments. Another feature I like is that you can use Dolby Vision for gaming. If you have an Xbox Series X, then you're able to play your games in Dolby Vision. Now, the biggest advantage about Dolby Vision gaming is that you don't have to make adjustments every time you play a different game. Like you don't have to worry about HGIG or dynamic tone mapping, Dolby Vision does that for you and the picture looks great. If you're using the PS5, all the features work as well, including 1440p, VRR, and 4K 120Hz, and the picture looks amazing. All the TVs have the best black levels and contrast you can get and a beautiful vivid colors. No matter what angle you're sitting or standing, you will have a solid image. I also love the glossy finish. This is one of the reasons I prefer to game on a TV. The glossy display adds more sharpness to the image and better black levels. Yes, you will see more reflections if you have ambient lights around you, but overall the picture looks sharper with vivid colors. At least that has been my experience with using glossy displays in comparison with matte displays. I also connected my PC using the HDMI port you can change the resolution under the NVIDIA control panel and also the refresh rate. In this case, I'm using 144Hz option. You can also set up G-Sync for smooth gameplay and you can check all the information in the game bar. And games look crazy good. Now, I'm mostly playing Helldivers 2 and I'm having a blast. This TV not only has an amazing picture, but it's also fast and responsive. Now, somebody suggested that I should use FreeSync instead of VRR while gaming on the Xbox because the picture looks better and brighter when using FreeSync. Now, in case if you don't know, FreeSync and VRR and also G-Sync basically eliminate screen tearing and stuttering for a much smoother gameplay. Now, I did this comparison while playing Warzone and I did notice a bit of a difference. When using VRR, the picture looks a little warmer and when using freezing, the picture looks cooler and brighter. At least I can see brighter highlights. Now this is not as noticeable when the whole picture is bright, but in dark games, this will make a difference. So since I do prefer brighter highlights, I'm going to start using freezing from now on. 
I also noticed that some people have complained about ABL or Auto Brightness Limiter where the screen dims when it's on a bright image for too long and there is no movement. I personally haven't had any issues with this feature since I am constantly using the TV, but I think it's a very useful feature to prevent permanent screen burn just in case if you leave the TV on for long periods of time. So yes, this TV is excellent for gaming, it has an outstanding picture quality and it has all the gaming features for consoles and up to 144Hz of refresh rate for PC and it's fast and responsive for competitive gaming but at the end of the day, it's still a TV. So it comes with the newest version of LG WebOS with all the popular apps available like Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus and it also has Dolby Vision and Atmos available. So you can watch your favorite TV shows in HDR or Dolby Vision with the best sound and picture quality and you won't be disappointed. I've been watching Fallout series on Prime Video and the picture looks fantastic. Very colorful and sharp and like I said, all the TVs have the best black levels and contrast so you'll be able to enjoy those bright highlights in HDR or Dolby Vision at any angle. Now I also own the LG C1 OLED which came out around 3 years ago and I was intrigued to see if there's a significant difference in picture quality. Now I'm using the same cinema picture preset on both TVs and I'm playing in HDR video. Now can you tell the difference which TV is the C4 and the C1? Alright so here it is. The first thing I notice is the C1 has a warmer picture. Even though I'm using the same picture settings, I did notice a yellowish tone on the C1. I also noticed the C4 is slightly brighter, not by much, but in person it is a noticeable difference. I was only able to see this in certain scenes, but overall the picture looks almost identical. Now I heard that larger sizes like 55 inch and up are significantly brighter than the 42 and the 48 inch sizes because LG is using the newer panels. Now I personally can't confirm this because I don't have those sizes, but in this case there is a bit of a difference. However, I think that if you already own the C1, you shouldn't be worried about upgrading to the C4. I think the G4 will be a significant upgrade since that TV is using the upgraded MLA panel, which is much brighter. Now with that being said, there are a few things I don't like about this TV. Now first of all, it is very laggy. When opening the settings menu, most of the time, I have to wait around 5 to 6 seconds for the window to open and you can even see the loading circle in the middle. And the same goes when navigating through the settings. Sometimes when pressing the buttons on the remote, you don't see those actions on the TV until a few seconds later. Now this is very frustrating when you're trying to adjust the settings and the same happens when navigating the operating system. Another thing they can improve is the remote control. Now even though it works fine, but I feel like they can get rid of these numbers on top and make it a little bit smaller. I mean, it is the same remote as the C1. They haven't improved anything about it for years. Maybe add some backlight? And then the last thing is the price. Now I know this will change in just a few more months down the road, but right now it's $1,500 plus tax for a 42 inch TV I think it's just too much. So if you're in the market for a new OLED, I suggest to either get the C3 from last year or wait for Black Friday for a significant price drop. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoy it and if you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, I'm Jolster and I'll see you guys on the next one, Jolster out!